Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second session of our Devon and Beyond Did You Know series. In this webinar series, we focus on new features and enhancements of Oracle Cloud infrastructure and discuss how these solutions empower businesses to achieve greater efficiency, security, and scalability. Whether you are a seasoned OCI user or just starting your cloud journey, you are in the right place to explore what's new. My name is Renu Bhatt, Program Lead for the Customer Enablement Team here at Oracle. And joining us today for this webinar is Aaron Rimel, Principal Product Manager here at Oracle. Hi, Aaron. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's it's exciting to be part of this new series that you guys have, these day one and beyond. So it's a privilege being here, and I'm looking forward to uh, to talking with you today. Again, I'm excited too. So um, let's get started without any further delay. So Aaron, uh, Today's organizations, today, I mean, organization, they want to not only modernize their IT operations and reduce time to market, but they also want to deliver business value by managing applications availability, performance, and outages in a predictive and cost-effective way. So my question, do organizations struggle with monitoring when they move from on-prem to cloud or a hybrid environment or even a multi-cloud environment for that matter? What challenges are our customers facing today? Yeah, this is this is actually a pretty exciting topic for me. Uh, it's near and dear to my heart. I've I've lived this problem myself uh, prior to joining Oracle. So as development teams and DevOps teams, they when they adopt these new observability tools as they move to new cloud native cloud native applications, they just kind of keep building, deploying, and adding on new observability tools, and it it doesn't always play well. Uh, just as this study suggests, there's 60% of the observability tools are just simply too narrowly focused, and they don't give you that unified view of the entire mixed landscape. And I mean, this is what I was saying prior to coming to Oracle, I had this problem myself as we transitioned from on-premise to the cloud. Uh -huh. My team and I suffered these same challenges. I mean, we so had a... Go ahead. Yeah, please. Yeah, I mean, so with this narrow focus and the fragmented technology that you mentioned, how is Oracle going to address this problem for our customers? Yeah, absolutely. So before I dig into exactly how we're going to solve this, let me just kind of give you a little background information on Oracle's overall observability and management services approach. So it's Oracle's observability and management services. They're a cloud native platform and they bring together all the telemetries, traces, metrics, and logs for both monitoring and analysis. And Oracle's observability and management solution consists of these integrated services that can monitor all your resources across the hybrid environment and multi-cloud environment as well. Awesome. Awesome. Um, tell me something more. I mean. What are the core capabilities of the product then of stack monitoring and how will it help the customers? Yeah, so let me dive in a little bit deeper about how stack monitoring helps solve this problem where monitoring solutions are typically too narrowly focused. So stack monitoring is a service that lets you proactively monitor an application and that underlying application stack, including application servers, databases, and hosts, no matter where they're deployed. And you can discover everything from an Oracle database, SQL Server, WebLogic, Tomcat, EBS, PeopleSoft. I mean, those are just a few. And it's all done through this discovery UI that's almost, it's like a single click, fill in the blank. It helps you get started quick and easy. And once again, it doesn't matter where you're located. It could be OCI, on-premise, or it could be in another cloud. Awesome. Um, are you going to show us something on the screen or you have to talk yeah something? so let me let me discuss some of the uh the key features that are available in stack monitoring so today i'm going to primarily focus around host monitoring because it's kind of that core central component of everything as you know um getting started <clears throat> but many of these things i'm going to discuss today can apply to oracle databases apache tomcat and many more so the first feature is did you know you could get started monitoring your first host in less than 30 minutes? Or are you aware you can automatically monitor all your hosts? Or how about that stack monitoring is capable of monitoring at both that micro and macro level? So to give you a little more information, let's go into each one in a little bit more detail. So before you begin you, with your first application, you must enable the service. Um, and 
So stack monitoring is located under uh, APM, under the observability and management menu. And to get started, you simply navigate to the compartment that you wish to monitor where you want to create that single pane of glass. And remember, it could be on cloud, it could be an OCI on premise or another cloud provider. But once you've navigated this compartment, you enable the stack monitoring service. And within a couple minutes, it's up and running and you're ready to begin monitoring your first host. Just a couple but, of minutes. Yeah, I mean, in the time it took me to just describe this on the screen, we've been able to onboard stack monitoring to an entire compartment. It's amazing. So this leads me to the second key feature, and that's automatically monitor all of your hosts. So to simplify your monitoring, we recommend enabling host auto promotion. Host auto promotion lets you automatically monitor a host once a management agent is installed. It's like a set it and forget it, right? And no matter if the host is an OCI compute or a host running on premise, or it could be another cloud provider, it just simply needs that connectivity from the management agent to the stack monitoring service. And we'll immediately begin monitoring that host as soon as the agent is installed. <clears throat> so once a host is discovered, stack monitoring will immediately begin monitoring and create a homepage with specially Specially curated metrics for that resource type, perfect for the macro level or <laughs> micro level. So here we have an example of a host homepage where you can see that the status is up, right? Or you can review any open alarms for this resource for this host. And using the performance charts, you can review swap utilization, historical file system utilization, if you want to. And if stack monitoring finds a, the performance is anomalous. We're going to highlight that with an with a orange plot point right there. And if this is an OCI compute, I can't tell you how much I love this. But if this is an OCI compute, we give you a breadcrumb at the top. And all you got to do, if you find performance problems here, click that link. We'll open a new tab, take you right to the OCI monitoring service, and you can reboot that thing. You can change the shape, add memory or CPU. You don't have to go searching for the res you know, you don't have to go searching for the compute. You don't have to do anything. You just click the link. I love this feature. I mean, you not only have a single pane to review everything, but you can also fix it right from there. Exactly. And without having to go to another tool or log into another place, you just follow the breadcrumb. Amazing. Another really cool feature that we really like is our topology. And the topology gives you that information. And I'm going to show you this in a little more detail, hopefully in a bit here. But it gives you that information, that context of what's running on your host. Is it a you know PeopleSoft application or Apache Tomcat? You can go get all of that information and then correlate the, uh, the performance of this host to the performance of the application that's running on it. So we discussed at the my, uh, monitoring at the micro level, but what about at the macro level? Well, stack monitoring provides various ways to monitor at the macro level. So the first, we have a host fleet view dashboard, and it's available from any of the observability and management dashboard menus. And it gives those sysadmins access to the health and performance metrics to monitor their hosts across their entire fleet. And the dashboard summarizes the current you know, availability of those hosts, any open alarms against the hosts, and keep an eye on highest CPU or highest memory swap and file system utilization. But if you want to know about the performance of your host in context of the resources that are running on it, then you would use the enterprise summary. And this enterprise summary was designed to provide a scalable way of monitoring by exception, right? That's how I always monitored mine. If I was troubleshooting, I was always looking for the whole, you know, that saying one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing the number of times that that holds true and helps you triage performance problems. You know, um, all these uh, graphics that you're showing, I, I believe these are the screenshots of the actual your tenancy, right? Where you're monitoring? Correct. Are you going to show us actually, you're going to log into your tenancy and show us how all this works? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. So. Awesome. Let's see a demonstration. Like one of my colleagues is saying is believing. <laughs> yes, exactly that. 
So stack monitoring, the enterprise summary gives you that kind of that 10,000 foot view of all your monitored resources. And again, it doesn't matter where it's running, an OCI on-premise or somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. And so by coming to this page, the first thing that you get is you get information about how many of your resources are down or how many of your resources are not reporting. And if you need additional context, you can just roll right over here. You can click on the down and get a quick understanding that you have a database down, you have four application servers down, but you also have five components of an EBS application that are down as well. So it really helps give you additional context as to what is down. Now, the other cool thing, and this we just updated not that long ago, so this is kind of an exciting new feature, is if I come over here and I click on the account of, sorry, and I click on critical alarms, we're going to show you the severity of the alarm, the alarm name, the trigger time, the resource name that's being impacted, the metric, the dimension, and the value. And this gives those sysadmins, you know, or DevOps engineers, the ability to put context behind the alarm to know how to triage. If I looked at all this, you know, an entire page of alarms, I'd sit there and where do I begin, right? And so having the value is critical. Here we can see that we've got a JD Edwards server where the root file system is 97.5% full. I'm probably going to go after that and fix that issue before I go hit this 73% alarm on CPU utilization. So it's real fun how the dimensions really help give you, or the, the current value of that alarm really help give you that context you need. Now, from there, the rest of the enterprise summary is broken down into tiers. And I don't mean that I'm making it cry because of something terrible that's happened. Instead, what we've done is we have like the EBS suite tier or the PeopleSoft tier. And if you don't have EBS, that's perfectly fine. You can actually rename this entire row and put every metric you want and save it as your default and you never have to see EBS again, add another PeopleSoft row. But scrolling down, we also have the application tiers. We have the database tier and we have the host tier. And remember we talked about it, the enterprise summary is monitoring by exception, right? Mm -hmm. And if we look at the hosts, we can see that like the majority of hosts are consuming memory. That's what we expect. That's why it's there, right? But one guy all the way over here by himself, he's using 100% of memory and 100% of swap, right? And this is know, that- How do I know what the guy is? Can we click on it and- Yes, it? and that's what's that's what's helpful, right? Could this just been a fluke? Did it just do it for a second? And clicking on the plot point gives you that historical, Ooh. that context Ooh. of mm -hmm. how long has this been occurring, right? And then we also give you those anomaly points that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, those are there. And if we want to go in and extend this and say, okay, has this just been going on for the last hour or longer? I can come in, say seven days. And over the last seven days, this performance has been pretty consistent. So we can dive in. Now, what we've done is we've been looking at this at the macro level. We identified a, a resource by exception. And now clicking this link, now we're diving back into the micro level. So we've worked all the way down, you know, into the depths of this host. And so from this page, we can see, you know, we can see it's up, it's been up since February 13th, summary of open alarms. We also have our performance charts. So let's take a closer look at those. So once again, anything with a plus sign will tell us that it's baseline enabled, but overall the CPU utilization looks pretty good. The memory utilization, it's been pretty consistent outside of these tiny little anomalous points, but performance doesn't appear to have changed, right? It's what we saw earlier. Now, a pro tip, this is one of those things that's kind of hidden that you don't necessarily know. If you click on the legend, you can hide other dimensions, and that shows you that baseline, that expected high and low range of what that performance we think should be. And you can see this just briefly fell just below the line, and so it's probably nothing to think about. Now, we talked about maybe it makes sense right now to go add additional memory, right? We know this has been doing this for a week. And so we can use this button, open up a new tab, go add additional memory. But before we do it, this is that other thing we were talking about, applying that context of what's running on this host. It's the middle of the day, right? If I go take down willy-nilly any host, I'm going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what's running on the host. We can click topology. And topology tells me I have almost an entire PeopleSoft application running on this one VM, right? I've got the PeopleSoft application. 
web logic server, a container DB, a pluggable DB. So it's no wonder it's running out of memory. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I can't imagine I'm allowed to just take down this PeopleSoft application in the middle of the day. So now let's correlate the performance of the, of the host to the PeopleSoft application. Is this something that we've got to do now? Or can I put this off till tonight and, and do a reboot when customers aren't, aren't on my system, right? Mm -hmm. So we click this breadcrumb and now that takes me to my PeopleSoft homepage. I can see a summary of all open alarms for my entire PeopleSoft application, but I'm here to understand the performance. And that's where we introduce Stack View. Stack view is really cool. This, this gives you that kind of quick perspective of is my PeopleSoft or EBS application healthy by giving you just some quick critical performance charts to be able to dive in. So let's extend the time frame. All right. Now we can see over the last seven days, health is good. System load is good. Scrolling down uh, on the same application server domain. There's no queued processes and running servers are good. Process scheduler domain, everything looks healthy. Queued process for scheduled, uh, schedule, <laughs> process scheduler domain. There's no queued processes for it either. And there's some running servers. Um, Pia, Pia looks healthy. But now we're getting down to the web logic server, right? And we can see that our web request rate is slowly going up. And we see our web request processing time has shrunk just a little bit. JVM usage, I mean, all of that looks pretty good, honestly. I mean, it doesn't look nearly as bad as that host does. Looking down at the database, it's not overly busy. In fact, it looks, you know, pretty pretty chill. Um, there's not a lot of wait times and transactions are looking good. And once again, with the host, we can see that that thing is just consuming some memory. So from this point, right, we could go ahead and move on over to the to the enterprise summary, and we could go create, customize one of these charts and save it as our default and just watch it until we're able to take a downtime. But with our time today, let's jump back to the presentation. Wow, um, Aaron, I mean, this is so detailed, so thorough. I'm sure um, our competitive products uh, uh, have something similar. But even otherwise, I mean, how does Oracle keep up with this and keep up with the industry and stay ahead? I mean, uh, do we have any additional features? I can't think of any right now with all this exhaustive list that you shared. But do yeah. we have any roadmap <laughs> that you can talk about? I can hardly sleep at night. We have so many things that are coming out all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, big big props to our development team who is constantly putting out new features and, uh, support. you know, new New, new cool things all the time. But here are some really fun things uh, that has us pretty excited. Monitoring templates, right? Um, in the next, next few months, we're going to be releasing support for monitoring templates. That's going to allow you to standardize your monitoring across your databases, hosts, web logics, and more. You can apply alarms and notification settings then at scale. Uh, maintenance windows. That's going to allow you to suppress those alarms on one or many resources, such as a host. Maybe you're patching every month, or maybe you're doing something every week to a web logic server. I don't know. Um, but you can set up a cadence on when you want those suppressions to occur. And knowing that if you're taking down a host, everything that's running on that host will fire an alarms as well. So you can just say, here's my 10 hosts, and all the resources running on top of that host will also be suppressed just to make your life much, much easier. Now, the other cool thing is monitor anything. So we're going to really soon release support for Prometheus, but not long after Telegraph and Collect D support is coming as well. And then Stack Monitoring will create those home pages you saw like today, you saw today, and you'll be able to see performance anomalies. You'll be able to add those resources to the topology and be able to create, you know, for whatever that resource is related to the host it runs on, or maybe related to the OCI load balancer that may be servicing it, <coughs> excuse me, et cetera. So yeah, lots of cool things coming all the time. Amazing. This all sounds so good. Um, I like the fact that we're investing so much time to stay ahead of the curve and giving the best to our customers. Amazing. I mean, and I like the demo. I mean, that kind of says hence proved I and mean, whatever you features you shared before. Thank you so much for all that. But if I want to learn more about what you shared today, what you covered today, where do I go? I mean, do you can you share us share with us some links? Absolutely. So 
I tried to make it easy on you. Here's a QR code. Go scan that thing, and it's going to give you links to some exciting stuff, right? Um, it's going to give you links to our, uh, first and foremost, our documentation. It's going to give you links to our blogs, our YouTube videos. And speaking of our blogs, uh, before I get forget, don't forget you can subscribe via RSS. So if logging analytics or database management or APM comes out with something new and they blog about it, it, um, you'll know about it as well. It's it's pretty helpful. Uh, but a, one cool thing is our Live Labs. And Live Labs gives you, it's a self-guided workshop, right? Where you go through the process of triaging a problem. And it's very EBS focused, but the, the, the steps you take can be applied to just about any kind of application, right? And it gives you access to my PM environment where you can go in and see the resources you saw here today and be able to click and just kind of kick the tires per se, as they say, right? Awesome. So I'm sure everyone is taking care of that QR code to learn more about the product. I'm really amazed at how much you shared today. Thanks a lot, Aaron, for a great session, such a detailed demo, and also giving us a sneak peek into your upcoming updates as well. I hope everyone learned something today. I learned a lot with this session today. Aaron, the question, how do we change the section titles on the Stack Monitoring Enterprise Summary homepage? So it's really quite simple. There's just a little uh, pencil icon. And within the pencil icon, you can go in, you can change the name of the chart. You can change and compare any two metrics. You could you can update a scatter plot to a table. Um, if you want... 10 rows in your table, you can have 10. If you want all the rows of your table, you can have all the rows. Um, and so there's a lot of flexibility there to allow you to go in, manipulate it. It just works really well as a on-the-spot troubleshooting tool. If you get an alarm for something that we don't necessarily show, and it could be a resource that you don't even have on there, you could go pick, you know, I don't have OHS on here. You could go make an entire chart just for OHS to kind of do that troubleshooting to watch throughout the day. Awesome. And then um, there's another question. Can we also use stack monitoring to monitor cloud service which aren't really deployed against a host like Oracle Integration Cloud, Identity Domains, Fusion Analytics Warehouse, et cetera? So stack monitoring is looking to do uh, more support for Oracle Integration Cloud. We don't... Um, we are... That is something that we are working on today, so I don't exactly have a better answer for you. But with anything that emits, and we didn't talk about this today, but anything that emits data into tele, uh, telemetry. So let's say like your load balancer, your block storage, anything that, that emits data like that, metrics, we can turn that into a resource and monitor it and bring all of that information. So we can give you availability plus all of its metrics. And it's like, load, you could go and import load balancers, right? Your OCI load balancers. And then add that to your EBS applications uh, topology to be able to complete that. So you could have the entire stack there from the load balancer to the storage. Um, so that's one way in which you could get that data is if it's already in telemetry, you can import that into stack monitoring and we'll create a resource out of it, start, uh, we'll you know, give you a home page, be able to let you create all the topology, all that fun stuff. And if you have resources in different compartments, can you also monitor those? You can. There's a number of ways to do it. And we have some documentation out there that addresses exactly how you do that. Amazing. There is one more question. It says, will this replace OEM? No, absolutely not. OEM, um, I, I used it for well over a decade and it is an amazing tool. Um, this is kind of a, a cloud service uh, approach, right? Um, EM is very, uh, you know, you need to go in, you need to configure it, but, you know, some customers may not have uh, the staff to be able to, to build an EM or something like that. Or maybe they just want a subscription model. And stack monitoring is just another approach. It's a cloud-based approach. You don't ever have to patch it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but EM is just an amazing tool. I, I couldn't imagine my life without it. And no, we're not looking to get rid of it. Cool. And then can we integrate the alarms with emails, SMSs, so that we can keep track of that? 
Yes, there's a number of subscription topics that you can do. Um, as far as being able to get alerts, you can you know post to a Slack channel, whatever it is. Um, there's lots of different availability out there. Um, in this documentation here, you can search on the left hand side for the notification service. And they'll and they can uh, there's a number of steps to help walk you through that, but it's really a pretty easy process. Okay, one last question: um, Do customers have to pay extra for this? So Stack Monitoring is a paid service. Um, you can find out more about our pricing. We have a we have a standard edition as well as an enterprise edition, depending on you know what kind of monitoring you're looking for. Um, but I, you know absolutely go check it out. Um, the standard edition is you know. Will, will give you access to a lot of this for a uh, very little cost. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aaron. Really appreciate your time. And once again, thank you, Anna, Srini, and Anand for fielding the questions. Our next webinar will be on Monday, April 22nd, where we will talk about Oracle Cloud Guard, which provides a unified view of cloud security posture across OCI. Come join us to learn how our recent introduction to Cloud Guard instant security extends that visibility into virtual and bare metal machines running on OCI. Thanks again for joining us. See you all next time. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.